potassium sunshine. Oh, don't feed her. Come on there, chop chop. Daddy hates to wait. I got it. Oh my God, Mom, my basketball clothes. Oh no, who was supposed to wash them? I'm dead. I'm more than dead. You can come right back to life. Good morning, my lovelies. Gotta go. Daddy, you're supposed to drive me today. Not today, Pumpkin. Cunningham just called, screaming. I gotta go. Paul, it's your morning. She's in her pajamas. I'm late already. Livy, get dressed. Come on, Paul. It takes you three minutes. You go right by. And 20 minutes to get out of that street, they call a drop-off, so... I've got my meeting with Mr. Draper this morning. Mom? I know. What can I do? Besides, you've got time to make it. Mom? Typical. What is it, Livy? Last night, when you were at the PTA, a woman phoned and said that you're meeting with that... Mr. Draper. Yeah, well... It's at 9.30, not 10. Oh, Livy. Now you tell me? Sorry, I forgot. Oh, great. That's great. I said I was sorry. Hello? Livy, chop, chop. Rachel Lindsay, please. Yes, this is Rachel Lindsay. Of the writing school? Yes, of therapeutic writing. That's right. Michael Harvard. Oh, Mr. Harvard. Yes, well, I've got your messages. I, I just uh, haven't had time to return them. Well, I know your program's full. It's plain. See ya. Did you make an exception? No, I wish I could accept every child, but we just don't have the resources. Well, I want you to know. Uh-huh. Money's no object. Uh -huh. That sounds very much like a bribe. I, I, I didn't mean it that way. No, I'm sure you didn't. It's just you're the only game in town. Well, there's nothing that I can do about it. But you don't understand. Goodbye, Mr. Harvard. I'm hanging up. And then Mrs. Markham said right in front of the whole class, Olive Marie Lindsay, it's a very original idea. Stonehenge. What do you think, Mom? Is it original? It's very interesting, sweetheart. I'm going to build it so that you're looking at it from the air. Way up, you know, so the stones are really little. Otherwise, it would be too heavy for me to carry. Don't you think? Mom? You mean you're going to do like an aerial view, like from an airplane? Or you could do it as if it were from a UFO. Some people think Stonehenge was built by extraterrestrials. Really? Cool. Too stupid. We're so close and we're so far. That's the story of my life, sweetheart. We'll probably never know what causes the bond between an autistic child and a horse, but we've proven scientifically that it does happen. And you need? Well, I have one specially trained horse. I need three. I have one licensed physical therapist on my staff. I need one paired and trained with each horse. We take care of 12 kids a week, and there's so many more on the waiting list. We've been able to maintain with our own funds so far, but it's becoming increasingly difficult. Mrs. Lindsay, I can uh, appreciate your efforts here. Seems like you've done some wonderful work. Thank you. But I can tell you that your kind of charitable project doesn't fall under the parameters of the kind of project we support. I'm very sorry. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks a lot. Hi, Howard. Oh, good morning, Miss Lindsay. I don't know why you bothered to give me a ticket, my purse, and pizza. Oh, never mind. Okay, I've come for Paul's house. Harris Tweed Jacket. Right. He needs it for a business meeting. How'd you know? Uh, he mentioned it when he picked it up this morning. He picked it up this morning? He called it his uh, lucky jacket. He didn't want to take any chance of not having it. Thanks a lot, Howard. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. No, no, no problem. Sandy's helping out, and we're just finishing up. Good. Ashley and I are doing just fine. Yeah, you look good, Ashley. You look really good. I'm glad to see that. You don't need me anymore, do you? It's a sad day.
Yeah. Hi, Paul Lindsay. Uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Lindsay? Phone. Yeah, whoever it is, I can't, I can't talk to them right now. Uh, it's your wife. Sorry, just take a moment. Yeah. So what is this, Paul? You didn't have time to take your daughter to school, but you had time to pick up your dry cleaning? This is not a good time. No, it's never a good time. I'm sorry. I'm at work. I can't discuss this right now. I'm at work, too. Talk to me. I've got to go. Oh, Paul. I'm hanging up now, Rachel. Yeah, sorry about Paul. that. That only worked for John Wayne. Hi. Hi. Uh, can I help you? That's the question of the day, isn't it? <laughs> Why don't you both sit down? Stephen? Stephen, sit down. Sit down, son. Oh, I see you got a first aid kit. That hand needs some antiseptic and a bandage. No, it's it's really okay, Mr. Michael Harvitz. Uh, that's my son, Stephen. We spoke on the phone. Yeah, you're the one who called my house this morning. Why don't you I... lay your hand on the desk and let's see what if we got. If I remember correctly, I told you I don't have room in my class. But you don't take no for an answer. Come on, it's probably bleeding into your lap by now. Aren't you going to ask me why I did something so stupid? Any of my business? No. Guess I'll just have to die of curiosity. So you thought you could waltz in here with your handsome son and charm me, and I'd have to take him on? My wife left, and she turned Stephen over to me. It's getting very difficult. Mrs. Lindsay, I'm just playing out of options. I see. Uh-oh. Stephen! Stephen! Okay, where... You can't go far. Oh. He likes animals. Yeah. I don't make a nuisance of myself unless there's a very good reason. <laughs> He's a good reason. Does that mean you'll work with him? I don't know. I'll try. I'll have to juggle my schedule. I will if I can. Thank you. You're welcome. You comfortable? You look real good up there. Steven, you look good. Can you sit up straight for me? Steven, when you sit up straight for me, you look like such a horseman. You're looking good. You're looking real good. Mm. Mother's name is Snowflake. She used to take kids for a ride. She got too old, so now Miss Juno's taking over. Steven? She's a good horse. Next time you come, you can give her a carrot. How would that be? She's a slut in here. Come on, son. Steven. More. <laughs> I said more. Okay? Okay. Tom, let's take another spin around. He understands what you say, you know. Maybe. Sometimes. My wife was better with him than I am. They had a kind of nonverbal communication. Sometimes that's the best kind. Well, how the hell do you know what's going on if nobody's talking about it? You listen with your heart. Stephen and I will be back. You be here for us? Yes. Ain't I the lucky guy? Uncle, go. Go. Goodbye. Off, you can come down and help me with dinner, okay? I have homework. Me too. You do not. Okay, have Maggie, come on.
Okay, girls, that's enough. Come on down. I'll get it. It's probably Blaine. Yeah, you wish. Was Blaine? It was Daddy. He said not to wait for him. He's running late. He's always running late. Yeah, he's never here. Well, you know, he works very hard. I'm sure he's got a good reason. You always say that. Well, it's true. I tell you what, since it's just us girls, why don't I throw some burgers on? We'll eat in the living room and you can choose the video. Cool. Okay. Red meat, Mom? That's hard attack on a bun. Sylvie, I'll make you a veggie burger. Well, can we make french fries? Yeah, if you peel the potatoes. Okay, deal. Yeah? Huh? You're kidding me. Oh, no, it's just my dad. Oh, I can't believe that. I didn't even know she liked him. Oh, yeah. No, no, it's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Why isn't Sylvie doing the dishes? Blaine called. So what? It's her job. Then you talk to her. Okay, what's the problem? Are you angry because I'm late? Is that it? You hung up on me today. I was at work, damn it. Is that the only thing that matters to you? You want to eat? You want Livy to continue going to that private school she loves? You want Sylvie to go to college? You want to be able to pay your stable bill, your vet fee, your farrier bill, whatever the hell that is? I want a husband who doesn't discount me. <sighs> I can't deal with this right now. When would be a good time, Paul? Should I call your secretary and make an appointment? I'm sorry. I couldn't take Livy to school. I couldn't risk it. You know how I get when I'm running late. You're always running late. It seems to be happening a lot lately. We had a deal, Paul. I know. I was late for my meeting with Mr. Draper. Oh, right, Draper. Mm -hmm. What happened? No, uh, nothing. It's, uh... What do you mean, nothing? I mean, nothing. How'd your dinner go? You first. Okay. He said no. Why? I don't know. I think maybe we're not quite high profile enough for him. I think he wants somebody who would generate a little more publicity. I'm sorry. It's okay. Your turn. How'd dinner go? All right. It was great. These builders from Atlanta want six multi-level malls right across the sundown. I thought we were talking about one. They like my ideas. That's great. To be honest, they love my ideas. When I get this job, there won't be a major commercial project in this country I won't be up for. So, you won't be so obsessed. I'm obsessed because I'm 47 years old and I've hustled from job to job for the last 25 years. If I don't get this job, if I don't take a step up to the next level, I'm going to be drawing by the numbers for some low-rent idiot who thinks taste is uh, neon lights on everything. It's just a job. It's not just a job. It's our life. It's your life. I do something different with my life. Right. Your horses. Well, I was talking about the kids, but let's talk about the horses. 
They may not be as grandiose as putting up an office building, but you know what happened today? An autistic kid told his dad what he wanted. He responded. He made a choice. And how much did this father pay for this moment of glory? Uh, $25 for a half hour lesson. That's not the freaking point. Stephen, put your hand on the saddle. Keep your hand there. And then put your foot in. Stephen, put your hand on the back of the saddle. Put your foot in. Put your foot in. Stephen, put your hand on the back of the saddle. She's going to resist anything new because it's scary. But don't let that discourage you. Okay, Stephen. Hand on the saddle. A lot of belly noise this morning. Okay, big girl. Okay. She acting funny? Yeah, uh, yeah, kind of. All right. Well, I tell you what. Is she offer feed? Nope. Well, we'll just watch her today. Okay. Stephen coming? Yeah. <laughs> He's getting to be a favorite, isn't he? Yeah. Hi, Stephen. Oh, good. It's good to see you. All right, let's go. Here you go. Atta boy. Give me a brush. Thanks. Okay. Oh. Good job. Oh, yeah, I'll give you a brush. So, we've been telling him over and over again, Stephen, put your foot in the stirrup. Put your foot in the stirrup. Today, he ran up to me, grabbed me around the waist, he marched right up those stairs, and I put his foot right in the stirrup. Awesome, Mom. Thank you very much. Who wants a brownie? Me. Honestly, Mom, pure fat. Pure fat. Mm. Oh, I get it. I know it's Blake. I can tell it's right. You're right. Hello? I'm home! We're in the dining room! Just a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. Bell Road South. Mm-hmm. To Steel. Right. Okay. Four miles south on Steel to the dirt turnoff. Okay, I've got it. Oh, no, no, no. Please, don't apologize. No, really. All right, I'll be there as soon as I can. Bye-bye. Who's that? Stephen Harvard's father. Stephen's gone into a rage. He's torn the house up. His father can't calm him down, and he's desperate. Why didn't he call a pediatrician? Well, he did. But someone else is on call who's never even met Stephen. I don't think he's seen an autistic child. What good would he be? Well, you're not a doctor. What good would you be? If you'd watch me work for 20 minutes, you'd know.
sorry he fell asleep. I should have never called you, but he was so angry I was afraid he'd hurt himself. That's all right. May I see him? Sure. He's upstairs. Oh, it's this way. the place before falling asleep. Looks peaceful now. What a mess. No, please. This isn't your mess to clean up. <sighs> Least I can do is offer you some coffee. Great. Oh. He's had tantrums like this before, but my wife was always here and she could come. Thank you. I used to uh, lock myself in my office when Stephen started in. Maybe that's why she left. How long has she been gone? Six months. Any chance she'll come back? I don't know where she is. Hmm. She sends Stephen postcards with pictures of animals. Animals, animals. Thing he likes likes animals. Yeah, I was talking about her to my family when you called. When you got married, did you have any doubts? Did you ask yourself, is this the right thing? Nope. Never had a doubt. Well, we've known each other since we were little kids, and we went to kindergarten together. Our parents were friends, so they pushed us together all the time. We hated each other. Then when we got to high school, the hormones sort of kicked in. The rest is history. Part of me knew it wasn't right to marry Yvonne. And when Stephen was born, I understood he was my penance for lacking the courage to say no. Oh, that's a terrible thing to say. I know it is. But that's how I feel sometimes. It's painful. Seeing him trying so hard to manage what would be second nature to an average child. Holding a hand, patting a horse, tying a shoe. It hurts not to be able to ever hug him. To hold him. I miss that. But he's my son. And I love him. It's just very difficult sometimes. I'm sorry. I have no right to judge you. No. You're honest. And kind. And understanding. So late. Mm, studying. Got a history exam? Next week. Mainly, I just couldn't sleep. Blaine Berenson? Oh, Mom, something happens to me when I'm near him. I feel like I'm gonna jump out of my skin or something. Do you know what I mean? I think I do. It's like your heart's so full. 
You don't want anything to ever change. You just wish it could stay that way forever. Wow. That's exactly it. You still feel the same way about Dad? Sure. We both ought to get to bed. Come on, come on. You to your romantic dreams and me to mine. Oh, well, come on. You're getting taller than me. How's the kid? It's okay. Do you remember when we were Sylvie's age? Couldn't think of anything except each other. Couldn't wait till we could hold each other again. Now we have unlimited access. Someone we know die? It must be. You, you look like something's wrong. No, I'm fine. Um, but you know, I really don't feel well. Think you could take my classes this morning? Uh, yeah, you, you know that Stephen's coming in. Yeah, I know. Just can't stay. <laughs> Daddy and I drove past Paul's new building on the way over here. I know it's not his fault. Malvin Cunningham's a first-class idiot, but it's really awful, isn't it? I don't know. I haven't seen it. You haven't? Mm -mm. You always take such an interest in Paul's work. I've been busy, too. You and Paul having a rough patch? No. Well, Rachel, I don't see your usual two dozen marshmallow treats. She spends all her time helping handicapped kids. She's too damn busy to ice cupcakes. Every third Saturday, Rachel. Been that way for years. Cora, I'll have that one over there. No, 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 that one, the you cake. You make that cake. I know that. It's a tunnel of fudge. Your father griped the whole time I was fixing it because it wasn't for him. Now I can gripe because he's paying for it twice. You can keep that. But, Olive, this is a $50 bill. Well, if I don't take care of my granddaughter's team, who will? Stupid cow. Marshmallow treats. Mom, my fine fat. Rachel, your father's gonna kill me when he finds out what I paid for this cake. paid three times what this full thing's worth, Ollie? Stop your complaining, Dal Truman. We're here to support Livy. Oh, she's doing fine. Yes, yeah, she certainly is. Come on, honey. That's my girl. Come on. Sure, Paul's gonna make it. Stop worrying. He'll be here. 
Maybe. Must be awfully disappointed if he's not. Oh, Sylvie tells me you've taken on a new kid. Yeah, I have. His family just split up, and uh, the mother left. His father doesn't know how to handle him. Oh, Michael Harvard? How'd you know? Well, everybody knows. It's common knowledge. She just couldn't take it anymore, is what people say. Maybe she just couldn't take her husband anymore. Everything to that. So what's he like, this Mr. Harvard? I hardly know him. Come on, Libby! Look who's here. Sorry I'm late. I was just leaving the office. I got a long-distance call. Way to go, Libby! Pass it, pass it! Hey, PJ! Hey, PJ! Hey, Libby! Tell the girls I'm gonna be in a minute and make lunch. I'm gonna feed Snowflake. Well, how long are you gonna be? I got an afternoon's load of work staring at me. Can you spare me for five minutes? Five minutes, okay? I just asked. Rachel? Look, I really do have a load of work waiting for me. I'll just pick up some takeout on the way to the office. Okay, fine. Fine, uh, we'll see you later then. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, by the way, you haven't forgotten about the dinner this week? Dinner? With the Atlanta builders and their wives. I told you about it last week. It's very important, Rachel. Yeah, it's okay. I've got it in my book. Emergency, Tom. It is to me. I guess the flowers didn't work. You didn't show up for Stephen's lesson the other day. Now, didn't Tom tell you? I wasn't feeling well. You really didn't have to send flowers. They're an uh, apology of sorts. The Harvard men have a lot to apologize for. Well, okay, Stephen's automatically forgiven. And his father? It's a lot trickier. Rachel, Miss Juno's really sick. Whoa, whoa, big girl. Whoa, girl. Whoa. Come here. Could be Colin. Yeah. Tom, call the vet. Tell him to get here fast. Okay. I better call Paul. Whoa, whoa, big girl. I'll keep an eye on her. Not gonna be able to make it, Paul. No, I know this dinner's really important to you. But she's sick and I'm worried. I can't leave her. I'll make the next one. Oh, well, and you don't understand. Yeah, that's a, that's a surprise. Miss Juno's down. I can't get her up. It can be sudden. Not a damn thing you could have done, Rachel. You're right. You want me to dispose of her for you? 
No, I'll take care of her. You can't bury her on your property. Now, Rachel, you know that. She's been my horse ever since she was born. I'm not going to let them stranger come. There's a city ordinance. And as a vet, There's I There's no city ordinance on my land. We'll bury you there. Thank you. Thank you. Last time I buried a horse, his name was Blackjack. I cried for a solid week. Of course, I was eight and a half. But still, I understand how you feel. It's cold out here. You want to go inside? When will Stephen be home? Tomorrow. He's sleeping over his grandparents. And they're taking him to buy a puppy, so he'll have a best friend, they said. Oh, what a good idea. When I was a kid, my best friend was a Poland China sow named Princess Margaret Rose. Was that before or after Blackjack? After. She was smarter than any three dogs and mean as a hornet. Used to charge my old man at the drop of a hat. Of course, I trained her to do that. But he didn't catch on for years. When he finally did, well, we had the best ham hocks and smoked bacon you ever tasted. See, there's always more than one way to look at a situation. I saw a best friend. And my old man saw pork chops. Do you really believe there's more than one right way to look at a situation? Sure. Mm -hmm. There's your way, my way. The guy in the corner's got an opinion, too. So how do you know who to listen to? Didn't someone once say, listen with your heart, and you'll know? It's under your knee. Uh, feel pretty stupid. Are you okay? No. No, I'm really not okay. I've been married 17 years to the same man. Never had an affair. I've always been proud of that. Can't say that anymore. I don't know. I don't think I'm handling this very well. I'm sorry. I can't help it. People fall in love. They have affairs. Affairs are for single women on singles weekends. Married women commit adultery. Look. I understand what you're going through. Please tell me what I can do to make it better. Nothing. Oh, it's really late. I have to go. I hate for you to leave like this. Well, I have to. Why don't you let me drive you home? Oh, I don't think so. Well, at least let me follow you in my car so I can see that you arrive all right. No, no, I'll be fine. I need the space. I'll call you. Let me call you. Bye. Good night.
Yeah, I'm sorry. When I called you, I had no idea I'd be this late. I've kind of taken up your whole night, haven't I? Honey, it's not about me. When I saw it was getting late, I called Daddy and let him know I'd stay on till morning. But it's past 11. Where in the world have you been? Just been driving around. All night? I needed to be alone. Well, I can understand that, but I, I worry about you driving around alone at this time of night. Well, I'm home now. No damage done. I'm gonna check the girls. Honey, do you want to talk? I can make us a cup of... Hell, I'll pour us each a shot of whiskey. Thanks for filling in for me. You gotta get to sleep. Is Paul awake? He's not home yet. Oh. Good night. you been? Are you okay? Yeah. I just took a drive. Mom, I'm sorry about Miss Juno. I'm even sorry that none of us were there when it happened. Thank you, sweetheart. It means a lot to me. Why are you up so late? I was watching the driveway. I didn't want to go to sleep till I knew you were all right. Now you know why Dad and I are up when you come home late from a party. Dad should have canceled his dinner when he heard about Miss Juno. His work's important. But you needed him, and he should have come home. Dad blew it. Well, sweetheart, you know, it all, it all evens out. Your dad and I have been married a long time. Sometimes I blow it, sometimes he blows it. You gotta just hang in there and ride it out. Seems to me like you do most of the riding it out. Uh, are you sleepy? Mm. Get back in bed. Okay. Okay. Getting home. Yes, but I come bearing gifts. What's that? Champagne. We are going to have a toast to the architect of choice, to the five richest men in Georgia, your husband. We close the deal, signed, sealed, and delivered. It's great, Paul. Well, now, how about a little more enthusiasm? I did good, honey. Things are going to be easier now. Come on, let's go celebrate. I can't. Come on, this is the biggest night of my life. What's the matter with you? Mrs. Juno died today. Oh, baby, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Would it have mattered if you did? I mean, really, the work that I do, you think it's stupid it's and meaningless and inconsequential? Like that. Why are you doing this? I didn't say any of those things. All I ever tried to do is make it easier so you don't have to work. I love my work. Even though you may find it inconvenient. But I guess I could have been with you tonight if it hadn't been for the horses, right? Well, no matter what I say, it's wrong. I signed the biggest deal of my life tonight, and you're mad at me. I don't get it. 
What do you want, Rachel? What the hell do you want? I don't know. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want anymore. As practiced by the people of Stonehenge. Thanks, Mom. I really like your hair like that. It's pretty. Thank you, sunshine. Thought I'd try something different for a change. Daddy, can I show you? This is Stonehenge in the winter. I'd like to do it like this, but snow's tough. Maybe I could use that Christmas stuff. You know, the kind that Mom puts on the ceramic village? Or powdered sugar. But maybe it'd just blow away. What do you think? Mom, do we have any powdered sugar? You know, in case I do Stonehenge in the winter. I think we do. Tell you what, we'll make a day. You and me and Stonehenge and powdered sugar tonight. Daddy, don't you think I can do this? I mean, if Mom helps me. What are you rattling on about, Livy? Like she hasn't been driving us all nuts talking about it. Yes? Her project for the history fair. Stonehenge, Temple of the Gods. Oh, that. Duh. Sylvie, don't talk that way to your father. Fine. I don't have to be here, though. What did I do? Sylvie thinks you acted like a jerk when Miss Juno died. Because? Because you didn't come home to be with us? <laughs> Livy, at the time, I didn't know Miss Juno was going to die. Nobody did. Besides, isn't there a statute of limitations on guilt? Huh? <laughs> Sweetheart, I was at work. That's not something I can leave at the drop of a hat. But this was special. Hello? I know I shouldn't call you at home, but you never called, and I left three messages at the office. Are, are you angry? No, I am. It's not a good time. I need to see you again. Really, it's impossible. I've got to help Livy with the project tonight. Who is it? Cora Block. She wants to call an emergency meeting to the basketball committee tonight. Well, go ahead. I'm going to be working at home tonight anyway. Are you? Yeah, I'll help Livy. It won't take long. Maybe it'll help me get off the hook with her. You sure? Yeah. Well, then I can make it. Mm hmm Where's the meeting? Right. Thanks. I'll see you tonight. someone see the car. This is strange. I missed you. smashed your fist into that cabin. <laughs> I said, now there's a passionate woman. Oh. And I was right. Yeah. Rachel, I need to ask you something. What? Do you still love your husband? Oh, please, Michael, don't ask that. Please let us just have our time together. Please don't spoil a magic. There you go, Tracy. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it makes up a little. You're embarrassing. <laughs> yes, you are. Finish the pledge. Here you go. 
I guess that's mine. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, Livy, look at that fool out there in the Bermuda shorts. <laughs> Daddy! Oh, my God, Sylvie. Blaine the Hunk Berenson. <laughs> Dad, it's not funny. Dad, look who's here. Grandma, Grandpa, over here. <laughs> Very good, Livy, but I'm not calling. Nice try, girls. Ice cream at this ungodly hour? It's a good thing the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the usual, honey, and don't go shy on the whipping cream. <laughs> Your uh, grandma and I are uh, all cozy on the couch, got our feet up, cuddling under our afghan, watching TV. And wouldn't you know, somebody decides she has to have a hot fudge sundae. <laughs> <laughs> Stage fright. I always get it when I have to sing in the choir. <laughs> well, it's a medical fact that hot fudge sauce cures stage fright. Really, Grandma? Duh. <laughs> now, Sylvie, it's always worked for me. That's my excuse for gobbling up ice cream. What's yours? Mom was supposed to help me build Stonehenge for school tonight, but she had to go to some meeting. So Dad said he'd help me, and now we're celebrating because we're done. What meeting was it? Oh, basketball league reorganization or something. Cora Bach called it. Don't like that woman. Never did. <laughs> Hello? Paul? Girls? She is probably in bed because it's late, Libby Marie. You gotta get to bed. Come on, let's go. Oh, and Dad? Thanks for all the help. And don't tell Mom you did a better job than her. Deal. Now get up to bed. I'll be up to tuck you in. <laughs> what? Think things are weird around here lately? What way? I don't know. Just a feeling, I guess. Are you still in love with Mom? Well, Sylvia, how can you ask that question? I guess because I don't even think of the two of you together that much. Like tonight, there was only one of you. It used to be just Mom, but now, lately... I don't know. I guess it's adult stuff. I'm gonna go to bed. said you look gorgeous in wet hair. No, you've always said Catherine Denner looks gorgeous in wet hair. No, no, no. That was my evil twin Skippy. He's always making those sorts of errors of judgment. I'm always called to account for his lapses. Sounds schizophrenic to me. I'll have to keep an eye on you. How about that Stonehenge we did, huh? That was good. It's better than I could have done. That's what Livy said, but she didn't want you to know in case it hurt your feelings. Our daughters, they're good kids. Rachel, you know I love you, don't you? I don't say it often enough, but you know it, don't you? Paul, sometimes I think you don't even like me. You gotta be kidding. Of course I like you. I can't imagine life without you. 
I can't do this tonight, Paul. I'm too tired. You don't have to do anything. I just wanted you to know how I feel. It's a simple statement, not a fight. You know, after we finished Stonehenge, I took the girls to the ice cream parlor, you know, to celebrate. Your mom and dad, I just sat at the table and watched them all. Well, and listened, really. And I was just so grateful to be part of this family. I feel like I'm losing you, Ray. Is it my fault? Talk to me. Mom! Mommy! Mommy, there's something outside my window. It's oh. trying to get in. Oh, sunshine. Olivia, just the trees on the window. Please, Mommy, it's scaring me. I'll put her back to bed. Stay with me till I fall asleep. I sure will. I'll wait up for you, Ray. We may be a little while. Why didn't you come back to bed last night? Must have fallen asleep. Took me a while to get Livy calmed down. How convenient. Meaning? Meaning we didn't get to finish our uh, discussion. Meaning we didn't even have to broach the subject of making love. Don't push me, Paul. It's not gonna work. What am I supposed to do? Stand back and not say a word? Is that where we've gotten to now? Girls, come on! You don't want to be late for church. Grandma's singing. Answer me, Ray. Not now. All right, let's go. Come on. Oh, Maggie stays here. Come on, Libby. Come on, Libby, let's go. What did I do? Maggie! Ma so we grab Maggie. Get in the car. Oh, Hi, Jill. How are you? Rachel, how nice you look. You wearing your hair a new way? No, yeah, you just are. got it down. Good morning, Olive. Hello, Cora. What have you been up to lately? All sorts of political intrigue, I've heard. Word has it Cora's planning to rewrite the basketball league charter, naming herself president for life. What? Clandestine meetings, secret troop movements, all the earmarkings of your standard coup. Paul, Lindsay, what are you talking? You know how he is. <laughs> come on. We'll talk later, Cora. Cora, come to the revolution. Don't forget your old friends. Talk later, Cora. <laughs> I don't think she thinks you're funny, Paul. What the hell was all that about? Cora and Rachel are plotting the end of junior varsity as we know it. Really? Does Cora know? Mom, does Cora know anything? No.
with your old dad, Sylvie, make me feel like a young man again? Dad, you're so corny. What's the matter? Funny, I was just about to ask you the same thing. Are you going to tell me about Cora Ba? Or should I ask her myself what she was doing the night that you were too busy to help Livy with her history project? Mom, I don't have to account for every single minute I'm not with my family. This is your mother you're talking to. That kind of tactical offense won't work with me. Because that man, isn't it? That Michael Harvard. His son's one of my students. I know who he is. I'm asking you to tell me what he is to you. And I'm asking you, please leave it alone. I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. I don't think so, Rachel. I think you need help. And as your mother, I'm always available for that role. Surprise. You left your gloves in the car last week. I promised Rachel I'd drop them off on my way home from work. Thank you. That's sweet, but he shouldn't have gone to all the trouble. Come on in. Well, uh, just for a minute. Can I get you some coffee or tea? Uh, no thanks, Olive. I, you know, I really gotta get going. Oh, come on, sit down. It's Dell's poker night. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Paul, is everything all right? I don't know. Things don't seem to be right. With Rachel? Like what? Well, I can't seem to do anything right. No matter what I do, no matter what I say, it starts an argument. Have you talked about it? I've tried. I've tried. What do you think it is? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's no question I wasn't home a lot for a while, but... <sighs> I guess I was a bit obsessed with the deal, but I thought once I got it, you know, things would be fantastic for all of us, that it would take the pressure off, that things could go back to the way they were. The way they were when? When we were a happy family, when we did things together, had fun. How long ago was that, Paul? A long time ago. And it seems to me you've got some catching up to do. You both do. But somebody has to make a start. And pray the other gets the message. I've been trying. Then try harder, Paul. Don't get discouraged. It'll take time. I want it to work between us. It's got to. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> all right, Kenny. Let's try some stuff today, all right? Okay. Can you reach your hands way up high? That's great. And can you make them in a fist? Bring them down to your shoulders. Way to go. Stretch them out and wiggle your fingers. Way to go. Just put them right down on your hips. Excellent. How's school? Is it good? Good. Good. Got a minute, Ray? Can it wait? Yeah, I guess. I, just, I wanted to go over that, uh... Presentation for the Whitlow Foundation. You know, we got a grant to apply for. Yeah, I'll come in early in the morning. What's going on with you lately? Nothing. I'm busy. I have errands to run. I've got to pick Livy up from early basketball practice. I'm, I'm just busy. Right.
hate that we're in a motel room. I hate that you're somebody else's. I wasn't cut out for this sort of thing. I'm greedy. I want more. I want you to be able to come home with me. I want you beside me every day. I want to argue with you about whose turn it is to wash the dishes. And know that you'll still be there after I'm over being angry. Just have to settle for three and a half hour lunches. Mm. Three? God, I forgot to pick Libby up. I can't believe I did that. When can I see you again? I don't know. It's really difficult. Well, you understand. About this high, long blonde ponytail, very pretty. Well, there was a kid here. I'm um, wearing a red plaid jacket. Ah, oh, where did she go? Um, some old guy in a red car came and picked her up. <sighs> it's no old guy. That's your dad. today because coach Lorenzini had to go to his wife's birthday party and that's why he scheduled an early practice instead of a I'm late sorry, one. I'm sorry, Livy. The truck wouldn't start. The battery's dead. What was I supposed to do? That battery's not even a year old, Rachel. I thought you were dead. You're in an accident somewhere or something. I just waited and waited for you. Livy, I said I'm sorry. It's never happened before and it won't happen again. I love you. Fine. Oh, baby. What's going on, Rachel? Nothing. I'm busy, that's all. With what? With... Why are you grilling me? I have to. You won't talk to me anymore. You're closed down. You go into overdrive. You accuse me of all kinds of transgressions I don't even know about. Talk to me, Rachel. Why bother? Turns into an argument every time. I love you, Rachel, as much today as the first day we were married. We're not the same people that we used to be. Kitchen's empty and waiting. Let's see, we've got some serious tea drinking to do. Is that Michael Harvard, isn't it? Never wanted it. 
I never thought it would happen to me. Didn't plan it. So why are you doing it? I don't know. He makes me feel alive again. You forget who you're talking to. 17-year-old Rachel once used those very same words about a 20-year-old Paul Lindsay. I know. But doesn't falling in love feel the same no matter how old you are? <laughs> Pretty much. But staying in love, that's a bit harder to do, isn't it? It's like Paul and I live these separate lives and they run along parallel to each other. But they hardly ever touch. When they do, it's just random places like Thanksgiving or when Libby had her tonsils out. The passion's gone. Well, who let that happen? Paul would say I did. Then Paul would be wrong. Takes two. How do you do it? It doesn't seem to be so hard for you and Daddy. No. His name was Jeff Hawkins. He was every bit as attractive as your Mr. Harvard. Did you love him? I thought I did. I was lonely. He wanted me. He made me feel desirable. Your father never seemed to be around. Oh, he had us to take care of. He was working double shifts to pay the bills. Was that it? You missed him? I missed what he used to give me before the busyness of our lives took over. I felt so empty. I thought someone else would fill the void. Well, I was as wrong as I've ever been. Are you disappointed in me? No. No, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm surprised. Does Daddy know? Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. I never thought this would be something I'd share with anyone. Especially you. Thank you. It means a lot. Rachel, do you love this man? Yes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that means anymore. I'm afraid I might lose Paul, but I don't know how to let Michael go. Paul's trying, Rachel. But he doesn't know that you need more. Find a way to tell him. Shouldn't he know by now? Michael does. Does he really? Then it seems to me you've got some pretty hard choices to make. <sighs> I guess I've really messed things up, haven't I? Yeah, you have. But you can do something about it. If your choice is to make your marriage work, then the first thing you have to do is forgive yourself. And Paul. How? Oh, honey, if you don't, then staying with Paul becomes some kind of a prison sentence you've imposed on yourself. And you deserve better than that. So does Paul. I stay, Paul deserves to know the truth. Yeah, but Paul may want to find his own truth. If he wants to know, he'll ask.
see you. I missed you. I have to talk to you. It's okay. What is it? Where was I born, Michael? I don't know. Around here? Uh, Singapore. My dad was in the army. Okay. Do you know how long it took me to finish college? I don't know. Seven years. I went at night while I put Paul through grad school. Did you know I had two miscarriages before I had Sylvie? No. Or that I won second in the state equestrian trial in 1970. What difference does that make? That was over 20 years ago. I know. It just... It seems important to me now. It was real. What are you trying to tell me? I don't know. When I called you, I thought I couldn't breathe if I couldn't touch you. Rachel. This is real. What we feel when we're together. No, it's not. This isn't real. It's a beautiful fantasy. But it isn't real. When we close the doors, it's like no one else exists in the world. But then someday, we have to open the door. What about love? I can't be two people anymore. I can't be Rachel, who wants to be with you. And Rachel, who fits in the Lindsay family. But you're not happy there. Paul doesn't know that. I've never even told him. Part of what's the matter with my marriage is my fault. You're choosing Paul. real and solid about my life. I want to give Paul and me another chance. Rachel, you love me? I still love Paul. I can't let you go. Sunshine. Sylvie wants Blaine to stay for dinner. Can he? Sure. I'll go tell her. Can you give me some room? Okay, great. <laughs> I'm going. Oh. Right, around, around, around. Sylvie, <laughs> Mom says Blaine can stay. Okay. All right. Okay, go, go, go. Oh, my ball. Okay, here we go. Give me the shoot. Go, go, go. Get off me. That used to be us. Let's go. Okay. I want you to be as happy as Sylvie is right now. How can I help you do that? Can you tell me? Because I don't know, Rachel, and I want to. I don't know. It's not that simple anymore. I came awfully close to losing. I won't lose you. Not to my job or yours or anything else. Anything. I promise. I love you, Paul. I was beginning to think you weren't going to come home. Do you need to know where I've been? I know. Straightening out all the odds and ends in your life. 
You're home. That's all I need to know. <laughs>